Quran. It's the summation of the entire Quran. Um, Malik's version is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. But either way, if you, if, if, if you, uh, there's a difference of how they divide these ayahs. Some put Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen as one ayah. And then they split, uh, the, uh, the, down below, there, there's there's a, a split. So it just depends on which uh, verse you're doing. So some of them don't split Sirat al Anta Alihim Mahdubi Alihim whereas uh, Malik split those. So you'll find there's seven verses which begin with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen is the first verse. So Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen is Rububiya, right? Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Is Rububiya. Mariki Yomidin. It's Ma'ad and Rububiya, right? But it's Ma'ad. Iyaka na'abudu is, is Ahkam, Ibada. Wa Iyaka nasta'een, Ahkam. Ihdina uh, al-Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Yeah, the Sirat al-Mustaqeem is the way Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim is the way of the prophets, right? And then غير المغضوب عليهم والضالين. So is the qasas and also the wa'id, right? Because there's you get the ghadab, so the Jews and the Christians and other peoples that have gone astray. And it's also sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim. There is a valid tafsir that that refers to the Jews and the Christians. So people that say that the, the last two verses are the Jews and the Christians, no, those are Jews and Christians that deviated. They're not Jews and Christians. So it's wrong to put that in there. Like, unfortunately, you know, we have uh, a, a copy, a translation of the Quran that actually has غير المغضوب عليهم, the Jews, what uh, الضالين, the Christians, and they've actually put it in there as if it's from the Quran. And so people reading that think that in our every day, in our prayer, we're asking God, not to make us like Jews or Christians, but it's not Jew. We want to be like the Jews and Christians who were rightly guided. Because there, there were Jews and Christians where we believe in their revelation and we, and the Prophet uses many examples of righteous Jews and Christians in the Hadith literature. There are many examples of Jews and Christians that were upright and good people. And in fact, when the Prophet ﷺ, they asked him to, to, to punish uh, you know, to make dua against the people in Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ You're trying to hurry things up too quickly. He said, the people before you, and he meant the Christians. He said, they used to be sawed in half. And, and, and they wouldn't give up their faith. They used to be sawed in half, tortured. And so what he was saying is, look, it's not so bad compared to what the Christians got for their belief. Uh, the way they're treating us in Mecca is not as bad as the way the Christians were treated in that early period when they were persecuted by the Romans. So that that's uh, important to know. So the, anyway, that was uh, for people that are, that are interested in that methodology. That That is one way. There are other methodologies. I mean, Imam al-Ghazali has his own methodology of studying the Quran, which is in the Jawahir al-Quran, which is an amazing text. And he gives six types of uh, uh uh, verses in there that are also a very interesting way to look. I mean, he had he felt that the Quran had jewels uh, and and uh, and pearls, um, and th and that if you understood the ju jewels and pearls, then you were able to uh, that there were a core set of verses in the Quran that were the jewels and pearls. If you understood those, all the other verses were really uh, embellishing and enhancing those core meanings, but they they were they were the same essential truths. And so he you know he he taught he he wrote a book to identify those so that you could study the Quran from that perspective. But there there are different ways to study the Quran, and and I would encourage creating groups, Quranic study groups. I think that our community should do that. We we read the Quran as a devotional practice. Like in Ramadan, people read the Qur'an, they do a khatam. Wallahi, people need to start studying the Qur'an and really learning the Qur'an and what these things mean and how they should change our lives and how they should impact us so that when we read the Qur'an, it, it's actually affecting us. 
uh, you, you can do a khatam again and again and again, but if you don't study the Qur'an, the purpose of reading the Qur'an is Quran. Aren't they thinking about this book? Or are their hearts sealed from being able to penetrate its meanings? And the Qur'an, it's just, it's uh, like Kalbahari, uh, you know, it's like, it's like the ocean. It's just uh, wave after wave of meaning. And, and the meanings don't stop. Even for the same verses, you can read, uh, you know, mulk for years and years and years, and you'll find things in there that you never saw before, right?